So let's dive into a simple but a real world problem. So we're going to define a problem, we're going to code up a solution, and then we'll go ahead and analyze the algorithm. So what's the problem we're going to pick? Something that is real world, simple, but very real and very practical. We want to find the maximum element in a list of n numbers. n can be very large, but you've got this list of n numbers and you want to get the maximum from that list. So now, when we want to sort of code it up, what do we need? We need two things. You need a programming language, you need an environment. So what we're going to do is we'll use Python, and the environment for now that we will use is Replit. It's really easy to use. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to shift to Replit. We've actually written up the code. I'm not going to go through the code in detail, except that I'm going to highlight two things. Number one is an initialization phase, and the second is a looping, right? Because both of these are important. And now, now let's actually go ahead and uh, play with the code a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, play with this a little bit. So we've got your input data, and if you actually just manually inspect the data, you see that uh, the largest element is 50. So let's run our program. There you go, it picked it up 50. Now let's change this a little bit. Uh, let's make this 2080. Uh, and let's run the program again. 80, bingo, picked it up. Now let's uh, increase the number of elements. Let's make that, say, 65. And let's make that 100. Uh, and we run it again. 100, great. So you see that the program works. We've seen that the algorithm actually works. So now let's go ahead and try and analyze the algorithm. We had a real world problem, we coded up a solution, and now let's try and analyze the algorithm. So we've got a size of the list is n. The initialization takes a constant number of operations, c. Let c be that constant. Now when you get into the loop, then the loop has a constant number of operations plus it executes n times. Constant number of operations, call it C1, but then it also executes n times. So the total number of operations would be C plus C1 times n. So what's the runtime? The runtime, as per the definition, is order n. Remember we mentioned earlier that we'd make certain simplifications and we're going to actually ignore any low order terms and we'll also ignore the constants. So essentially, this algorithm takes order n time for an input of size n. So essentially, what have we done so far? We outlined the problem, we coded it up, we played around a little bit with it, we got the right solution, and then we said, what's the efficiency of this algorithm? And essentially, we are saying that it is order n. So I'm going to leave you with an exercise. Code up the same example in Python and play with it. Right? I didn't go through the code with you. Try and do it yourself. If you don't quite get it right, go back to uh, where we actually highlighted the code. I believe these days sort of people take screenshots of this. Take a screenshot, code it up yourself, play with it, and see what you get. Mm -hmm.